On the spot news media, we got the latest news. We don't care about the views, we just represent it right. Put local news internationally every night. On the spot, wave that Jamaican flag from left to right. Let's get it right, y'all know the type. We ain't dealing with the hype. We make it take flight. Yeah, man, my viewers and subscribers, what a one. A blessed and wonderful uh, Thursday morning to each and every person out there tuning into on the spot news media. Now, my peeps, I don't know how we do it over and decide each and every morning. We have to give thanks and praise to the Most High Creator for the preservation of life because life is indeed the greatest. So, in the morning, my peeps, I have a few stories to share with you, the regular members of Chan Public, and also members of the diaspora. So, please like the video, share the video, watch the entire vlog so you can get a full understanding and a better appreciation of everything we are going in Jamaica. So, watch this now, my peeps. As you can see, we are traversing the streets of the crime riddled, war torn, violence prone St. James Police Division. Where knockings and clappings has resorted to being the odd of the day. Well, it has never stopped, but it had toned down a little bit. But right now, I can tell you, the gates of hell has opened into the Montego Bay space. And the knockings and clappings them out in all their glory. So, of course, you know that we have to deploy... Officer Yeman pick and team into the mobile space to try and quell this ongoing gang war between the infamous 5150 gang and that of a lesser gang but infamous nonetheless, the 1452 gangs. Montego Bay seemingly to me have the most active set of gangs right across the length and breadth of Jamaica. And I will have to do a vlog specifically on the active gangs coming out of the Montego Bay space. But now, I can revisit a knockings and clappings that took place in the Flower Hill community on Sunday. I carried this story Vaguely so, just basically giving you an outline of what took place and who lost their lives in that ongoing knockings and clappings in the Valley Heights area are more popularly known as the Flower Hill community in the parish of St. James. Now on Sunday, the knockings and clappings that resulted in the last life of this 36-year-old female, presently on your screen identified as Nastasia Smith, but more popularly known in the streets as Tass. It is said that Nastasia Smith is of a Valley Heights address in the parish. So I could get right down into the meat of the matter as it relates to the knockings and clappings that took the life of Nastasia Smith aka Tass. Now Tass was taken out by those criminal elements because of her spouse, her man. Now the funny thing about it you know, is that the knockings and clappings them know for a fact that the man is no longer in the community because the man's name was placed on a sheet among other names of course and the sheet was placed in full view of everyone hanging in the community so everyone can see the names of who that the criminal elements intend to slap away now the man never see the sheet himself, but he heard that his name was on the sheet. So the man take himself out of the place. Now for those who is wondering who I'm speaking about, the entire Flower Hill community know that a Brenty brother we attack. Now Brenty was taken out by these said criminal elements. The criminal elements from the Flower Hill community importing some man, some strange man in other place. So you know say I saw the criminal element them work. 
And uh, this just goes to show you know that sometimes when I send criminal go to jail to you know, sometimes it's to our detriment because I right there's so some link make. Because when you put man and man in a cell, you know, whether enemies are not, you know, them force to become friends somewhat just to survive the jail cell. And I write there so the flower ill man them meet the import them and switch out to each other's as shatters for use each other for do dirty work in their communities. So I go on and now is that the criminal elements are saying that the companion, the male companion of TAS was the one that made the call to the Nakis and Clappis them was slap where them two ya, the criminal couple ya, presently on your screen identified as 22 year old Imani Jarrett of a refuge lane address same place in Flower Hill and our 30 year old man a known and reputed Nakis and Clappis, known as Odin Smith, no relation to Tass as far as me. No. So now the importee them coming at the place and people start see them. Everybody start get Gigi and now and I say, yo, some strange man at the place, you know. Something right, yeah, so. So being the criminal elements and being in their feelings about the loss of life of their friends. They started to point fingers at Tass and her family stating that since they imported them coming to the place, officers, police officers has increased their presence and they are wondering if a Tass are in farm to the police them. Tass was innocent of that of course. Because we all know that the biggest set of informer are the same set of criminal them we are do the knockings and clappings. So on Sunday, when Tass lost her life, she was in her house and she was informed by someone that some whole heap of strange man in the yard. So Tass hurriedly closed her door and hop on her closing her window. Clam, clam, clam. And Tass, food get yam. Yeah, man. Several cans to her upper body and face. Close casket type of treatment. But the thing is this, you know, my peeps. Another female was inside the home. The other female received minor injuries. The house was sprayed with can. Doors, side, windows, everywhere. The man them turn on the automatic rifle and the chip glock them around there and deal with the thing a certain type of way. Thinking in their head that anyone inside the house would I just lose them three pints same way. But another female was in the house that got minor injuries, went to the hospital and was treated and sent home. But you would not believe who that female was. And that in itself is for another time. So stay tuned for that particular update. Yeah, man. Now, we could delve right into the ongoing gang war between the infamous, the bigger gang, the 5150 gang, and the smaller gang, but dangerous alike, the 1452 gang. Yeah, man. Both gangs are remnants of the infamous stone crusher gang so from as far back as 2020 late 2020 going into 2021 2022 that's when i first started to cover the gang war between 1452 and 5150 when twelly slap a punch because a brother known as bones food did get nyam all heap of things, it go on. 
until it is said that Twele and Sodine in a car, among others, and clap with Jimmy. Jimmy, as I stated in previous vlogs, was the brother of the reputed gang leader for the 5150 gang. Now, this gang warfare, you know, it's not go normal. And I can most definitely tell Montagonians that gear up for this one because like the previous one, this one is going to be very bloody. Now, last week, Thursday, Sodine Hilton, presently on your screen, said to be the girlfriend, the then girlfriend of 2014, get Fati Khan over there in Dalistan, Westmoreland, where she was residing on her condition of bail as she was the one that was charged for the knockings and clappings of Jimmy. Now, since Sudin lost her life, in such a brutal and horrific manner. All hell began to break loose. Now, this criminal element here, presently on your screen, known as Six, or Omar as some people may call him, said to be a KFC delivery man by day, but by night is a man where well strapped down and got knock it and clap it in the name a 411 that a blood lane man them and 5150 from Glendevan. And he was taken out at a KFC in Montego Bay, said to be done by yours truly 2014, and also in the company of the brother of the deceased woman, Sudin. Now the brother posted this presently on your screen the time when his sister's life was taken and decided that he will avenge the life of his sister and that he did it is said that he was in the company of 2014 among others that roll up upon the brother where i go pick up the kfc if he go deliver and deliver unto him a heel of bullets leaving him lifeless. He's a known criminal element nonetheless. So we call that squits out. So now him return back home. And Depan Fim Khan 1452 ends in an hour. And I go and chill and bill. Well strapped down. And I wait upon others. From 411 or 5150. And just to note, you know, for those who don't know the era that well, they are literally just a stone throw away from each other as in most garrison communities. So he was there basically waiting, well strapped down, not necessarily just waiting on any man with them say were involved from 411 or 5150 to clap them with, but also safeguarding and protecting himself just in case the enemy decide to come make a step in the place. But to his surprise, the persons who made a step in the place was Officer Yeman Pican Team, a man who is properly trained and definitely efficient in placing Khan in a dirty boy tomok. So to his surprise, Officer Yeman Pican Team come round the corner, well fast. And up on him, seeing the team of officers, him pop off him strap, slap two can in a bed for get them jiji so he can make a clean and good escape in a nearby house or bushes depending on the spot that he was sitting at. Now the crowd dispersed. Officer Yeman Pick and Team gave chase because they saw him with the strap in hand. The knockings and clappings continued between both. And when the smoke cleared and the battle has been won, he was found clutching the firearm, laying lifeless with a portion of can all over the upper body. Yeah, man. 
Remember what the former Commissioner of Police, that Major General Anthony Anderson, stated that his police officers are trained for knock it and clap it, center, mass, meaning say the upper torso, right there, so the police them train for clap can. Yeah, man. And that is what they did. Spread him out like a sheet. Shut eye control and settings was the order of the day. So now, Sudin's mother, only son and only daughter, lost their lives to a life of crime within less than a week. Poor me, I tell my peeps. The thing rough, I am most definitely convinced that the parents of these children has failed them miserably. And I'm not saying that the parents did not try their utmost best to bring them up a certain type of way. But sometimes, you know, my peeps, you have to look within and see where you went wrong as a parent. Two kids, both of them lose them life. In less than a week, one to the hands of criminal elements because of the criminal path that she chose and the other to the hands of the security forces because of the criminal path he chose. I am most definitely convinced that something is wrong with this younger generation of both men and women in St. James and you know the wider Western Jamaica. Because notwithstanding the number peeps, the 5150 gang and the 1452 gang alike, a lot of females are heavily involved in most of what you see taking place. The males may be the knackis and clappies, the trigger men, but a lot of these females are instigators in this type of thing. A lot of the females are the ones traveling back and forth from America to Jamaica with the monies to fund these gangs. A lot of the females are used as drivers as with Sudin in the knockings and clappings of Jimmy. A lot of these females are used as spies or spotters that goes out there to seek information to blend themselves with the surrounding and make calls and set up the lives of many. When I remember the knockings and clappings there were take the life of the three man them down a gully when the funeral are going, when the man them go make the step for them 12 14 food. A 10 year old girl get can up in her head and still suffers today from that. The call on 2014's life was made by a female aligned to the 5150 gang. So this is how these females always end up finding themselves on the wrong side of the fence because of their heavy involvement in the crime in the Montego Bay space. Remember, you know, my peeps, people like Two Fly. And some of these females are really nice looking, have nice bodies, so they can easily infiltrate and blend themselves with the surrounding of where they are because most people are going to just see the face and the sexy body and the nice Brazilian wigs and the pretty outfit, the sexy outfit. No man now look for say that pretty girl yeah. It's a criminal where I come seek for kill and destroy or set up somebody's life. But that is the harsh reality of Montego Bay. Now on the Spot News Media will be delivering to you a more compact vlog on the 1452 gang and the 5150 gang. I have all that information in my archives from back then. Some of those videos was taken down.
by YouTube because you don't know. The people have never tried to silence the voice of on the spot news media and don't want certain things to be known. So they did what they know they could and it was taken down probably months after without me even really noticing that that video was taken down because my inboxes flooded with emails each and every day. So some of them is overlooked, sadly so. So on the Spot News Media will most definitely give you a more detailed vlog on the 1452 gang and the 5150 gang. And as always, there are many among you members of the diaspora that is spending a lot of monies funding these gangs and continuing the gang war that continues to tear down the very fiber of our dearly beloved island home, Jamaica, sadly. So anyway, my peeps, remember to like, share, subscribe to the channel. Stay tuned to On The Spot News Media as I continue to bring you fresh news and updates in a subsequent newscast. On The Spot News Media. Yeah, man.